Watch out, because if you you let the air out of it, it'll leak. Oh, I think you've done it. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode and this week's adventure. Now, if you're new here, my name is Adam and I'm based in beautiful Lake Havasu City, Arizona. We're about two hours south of Las Vegas, situated along the banks of the Colorado River. And thanks to the Parker Dam, we are blessed with 26 miles of the most gorgeous blue water surrounded by an epic desert landscape. Now, before we get too deep into the episode, I'm gonna ask you a huge favor, and that is just go down and click that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I see tons of comments saying how you think this channel should get more views than it does, and I agree with you. Now, the best way we can make that happen is to keep that subscribe account climbing. So if you aren't already subscribed, then please make my week and hit that subscribe button. Thank you. If you've been watching over the last couple of weeks, you'll know that I just took delivery of my new Sea-Doo Switch pontoon boat, which has an awesome feature in that you can remove the seats and configure the deck any way you want. So this week, I thought it'd be fun to go out on the lake, find a little secluded cove, drop anchor, and camp out for the night under the stars on the deck of the boat. 115 degrees, that is the temperature right now, and it is about 5.30 in the evening. We have the switch all ready to go. Maddie is over here. She is gonna be my first mate on this trip, and then the real captain, El Capitano. This guy. We are gonna go on our first camping mission today and uh, it's gonna be a warm one. I looked on the weather and it said that at 11 p.m. it was gonna be 100 degrees still. The thing about out here is that it's not usually humid, which means that even though it's hot, you can kind of still deal with the, do you mind? I'm trying to, trying to film. But today is unseasonably humid. It's like 30% humidity, which is unheard of out here. Usually it's like 10%. Oh, also, you guys can see the flag flying here. I listened to you. Yes, it was flying upside down. No, there wasn't any catastrophic reason as to why I was flying it upside down. I just did it wrong. I just wanted to get it on the boat. But now, as you can see, it is flying the correct way. Now, correct me again. Some people said that you should always fly the American flag on the right. Is that is that a thing? If you can let me know in the description, that would be great because then I can swap them over if I'm offending anybody else. Give us a push. Beautiful. Seriously, one of the things that I love so much about this boat is how easy it is to uh, dock and to recover, he says as he drives into the shore. <laughs> He's like, we've never been here by sea before. Ready? Go on then. Woohoo! That's funny. So this beach is where I like to bring Diesel and I bring him in the truck or the Acti. And so he's never actually been here via the water. <laughs> so he looked super confusing. He's like, wait, I know this place. There's so much water tonight. So usually this bay here, you can walk around. I've actually even seen side-by-sides drive around there, but obviously not tonight. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's episode, and that is Metrovac. They make these awesome air pumps. This one right here is the Big Daddy Magic Air, and it makes four horsepower, which I'm pretty sure is more than my Honda Acti. It comes with this really cool six foot hose, which means that you can plug this in, and then you've got tons of reach to be able to inflate whatever you need to inflate. It comes with this really nice baked enamel, powder coated orange finish, which is super tough. It's gonna last forever. And uh, yeah, all steel construction as well. So they're just a very, very well-made unit. None of those cheap plastic ones that you get off Amazon. We have used it so far to inflate this guy, which is a 10 foot by seven foot, or maybe even bigger, uh, like inflatable dock thing that we've strung off the back of the boat and it makes light work of getting this thing both inflated and deflated. You can use it for basically anything that needs an air pump, so whether that be a towable for your boat, whether that be an inflatable pool, whether that's an inflatable mattress, which is actually what we're gonna use it for tonight because we are gonna be sleeping on the deck of the boat. That's why I've taken out the seats here. So anytime that you need a really good, solid, reliable inflator, I suggest you check out Metrovac. If you're interested in where to buy them from, make sure you check out the link in the description below. And once again, thank you Metrovac for sponsoring this episode. What's going on down here? <laughs> so Maddie is scared of fish. So I'm scared of fish. why won't you go out there then? Because I'm scared of I can't see over there. Okay, and what might be out there? There's nothing there. It's just scary that you can't see. She's scared of fish. We gotta fix that. We've got to get a free diving. So 
So we're looking for a spot, but obviously we've got the dog with us, so we want to make sure that we're near to a place where I can at least swim him over to the land for so he can have a wee and everything else. Um, but this is kind of a cool little cove that we found. For a view, we're tucked back here in this little cove, and there's no one here, and it's very quiet, very still. And we've just got this amazing view of the Arizona side of the lake. So, I think, are we in California? Did we come to California to camp? Sweet, back in California. So I have bought two anchors with me, so we're gonna do one off the bow and then we'll do one off the stern as well, just for to be extra safe. We're actually in a perfect position because this is where Diesel can get out to go for a wee. Go, bud. Nice bit of dinner on the boat. All right then, it's time. We've got the old Jackery on, fire in the hole. 750 watts. Ready? Three, two, one. That's, last <laughs> that, that's how powerful it is. You can blow the nozzle off it's got that much air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nearly didn't make it. <laughs> Come. He is a good swimmer, but when we're out here, especially in deeper water where the edges are quite steep, obviously he can get up over there, but just in case he gets in and panics and swims over to the edge and then tries to clamber up some of the vertical rocks, it's just a bit of peace of mind that he's got his little floaty on. And also people can see him as well if they decide to come into our little cove. Good job. Good swimming. Woohoo! Good boy. Yay! Well done, bud. Imagine if Diesel had his own YouTube channel. <laughs> He's like, so guys, they've just dropped me off now on this isolated peninsula in the middle of California, and I've got to survive on here for 12 hours with nobody here to give me pets or give me treats. I think there's barking spiders out here. Whoa, big one. Did you hear that, babe? Come here. That's it, one and two. There you go. Oh, and explosion. Thanks, bud. I'm not sure if the GoPro is gonna pick these up, but there are hundreds of bats, and they're like skimming the top of the water. They've all just come out now. Oh, where's the bats? Where's the bats? Huh? Where are they? So the one thing about Havasu that I loved before I moved out here was the fact that there's just all of this nature. Like, I mean, look at it. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And for, you know, 350 days of the year, you can have it all, you can have it all to yourself. It's just quiet. Obviously on holiday weekends, we've got the 4th of July coming up. That is gonna be wild. And actually, I think I'm gonna take the sea out and just do an episode where I just document the 4th of July in Havasu because it's nuts. But yeah, I just love the fact that you can come and do stuff like this. And also the fact that this is literally 20 minutes from my house. This is the most patriotic I think I've ever been. Here, maybe this could be my new LinkedIn picture. Version of swimming. Yeah. Well, that'd be fun. I'm scared. It's fun. It's dark. Ew. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> Why? Because I'm Come scared. on, let's go. Let's go. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy. Come here. You have to drag him up because he can't get his back legs up. 
One, two, one, two, three. Good boy. There you go. <laughs> Feels good though. Up. Good boy. Oh, that's nice. I might have a wee actually. Coming in. Babe. Coming in. Babe, stop. <gasps> Babe. <laughs> Okay, but you see under you, it's just black. Black and full of monsters. So I'm super excited about this. I found this like all-in-one spice shaker. So it's got uh, curry, paprika, salt, pepper, garlic salt, chipotle, is that chipotle? No, cayenne. Back to curry again. Look how cool that is. Chip and garnish. There you go. Enjoy. Honest? It's actually really good. So when I was at Walmart, I saw this at the checkout. One dollar for this little tiny bottle. Melinda's ghost pepper hot sauce. That is gonna go great with the wrap. I'm not even sure I'm gonna be able to get this closed. One of them. Oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> there we go. That, that's, that's wrapped, right? <laughs> mostly, it's mostly contained. I think that pat. Oh god! Oh god! It's oh god! It's opened. I mean, in my defence, this is the majority of this is salad. Like it's big, but it's leafy greens. Okay, so then if we just eat the top, then you got it. Oh yeah, get into it. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. It's had a bit of a prolapse, but that's okay. Babe, it's a full 10 inches. I have to get you what you're accustomed to. Fire in the hole. Overload. <laughs> okay, we need the jackery. It's pulling too much power for the bluetti. <laughs> it's so quick. No! I just, I just blew my nozzle off! Oh no! I try so hard not to litter. Just know that when you're using your four horsepower mode, it might blow your nozzle off. Well, this is our view. We have a sky full of stars. I know you can only see three, but I promise you there's more. And there's a nice little breeze coming through. Diesel is chilling back there. All right guys, well, first night camping on the boat under the stars. I do wish I had bought a fan. It would be nice just to have like a bit more of a breeze. I sleep with the fan on. I have, literally it's called the hurricane, but it's very, very nice. So hopefully we get a good night's sleep and I'll see you guys in the morning. Wanna go swimming? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Did this keep you nice and cool? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Watch out, because if you you let the air out of it, it'll leak. Oh, I think you've done it. Do you want the air mattress? Because I'm never, ever, ever sleeping on it ever again. Is that fun? We're gonna do it. <laughs> Good boy. Now we've got to go and rescue Diesel Island because I was in deflating it and it floated away. See you later, little cove. Hold on, Diesel. Is this more suitable for your swimming pleasure? Perfect. Thank you.
A little iced coffee delivery for you. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. This is tea, by the way, before anybody asks. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> Happy Tuesday, everybody. Thanks for joining us on our little adventure. We're gonna get a much, much better bed because that was horrific. I literally toss and turn probably once every five minutes for the entire of my sleep. Bye. <laughs> so the wind has just pushed us off the beach. <laughs> Diesel's like, um, guys? We would never leave you, Diesel. See? Don't worry, it wasn't on purpose. Good boy, are you coming? Go, jump from right there. Come on then. Jump. Come on. Go in. Go in. <laughs> He's like, it's too hard. Go in from right there. Come on, bud. Come on. <laughs> this way. You barely went in the water. Well, I think that is going to wrap up our first camping trip. We're going to head back, put the boat on the trailer, and then this one's got to go to work. And I've probably got to edit this video. So thanks for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. Did you have a good time? I had a great time. Any words of wisdom for the viewers at home? I don't know what to say. Say something like really like whimsical, like don't run with scissors or drink milk or you know what I mean be like always make sure you look in front of you when you go down the stairs <laughs> that was another fake laugh well I'm gonna throw it back to studio Adam because I'm sure he's got something very philosophical to say about this whole adventure uh, so thank you for joining us in the wild and back to the studio well I don't necessarily have anything philosophical to add I do have some good news I found the nozzle that blew off the metro vac. It was actually floating along the shoreline right next to where we were anchored. But yeah, what an amazing way to go camping. The Switch is just such a great platform for so many activities. And although the airbed was absolute garbage, sleeping under the stars and being gently rocked to sleep by the breeze and the water was just magic. And actually, if I can get a bit philosophical with you, I did have a moment where I was lay looking up at the millions of stars above us. And I thought about all the decisions that I'd made that led me to that very moment. And I definitely don't live a conventional life and I've watched my friends as we've grown up get settled down, married, have kids, and I couldn't be happier for them. But that's just never been my dream and that's okay. There is always so much pressure on us to conform or follow the status quo, but if you don't fit any of the prescribed boxes that society wants us to fit into and your goals and dreams lead you down a more non-conventional path, then just embrace it. You deserve happiness and as long as your happiness doesn't come at the cost of somebody else's, just bloody go for it. Life is too short to spend it doing things that you don't want to do and there will always be exceptions but you make the choices in your life that dictate your happiness and don't ever think that you're too far down life's path that you can't backtrack and then take another direction I mean I left a small town in England at 27 to chase my dreams here in the US I could have easily resigned myself to the fact that I'd built my life there and it was too late to change it but I didn't and look at me now so yeah, I guess I did just get a little bit philosophical on you, but I hope it inspires you or honestly even better motivates you to make choices that get you a few steps closer to your dream life. Time's ticking and as they say over here, there ain't nothing to it but to do it. So thanks for watching again, guys. Thank you for joining me for this week's adventure. I'll see you next week for another one. And until then, remember, don't know anything I wouldn't do. See ya.